The Porsche Furman engine, codenamed Type 547 and named after its creator, Ernst Furman, was built from 1953 until 1964. And Ferry wanted even more racing victories. The company developed a more efficient overhead camshaft power plant. The new four camshaft engine pumped out an impressive 110 horsepower and would easily rev beyond 6,500 RPM. Very complicated, very expensive engine. You've, you've really got to look after it. It's almost like a racing car on the road. You, you've got to check it regularly, service it regularly. You tend to listen for every little noise, get a bit paranoid, and you've got to have a big bank balance. For me, the 4Cam is um, evolution. It's, it's the next step, the next progression. It's like the granddaddy. That's the, that's the origin of their motorsports heritage. Um, and somebody deciding that they wanted to take the specifications of that engine to the next level and using the design that they did, which is mechanically obscenely complex but it was right for the time, the materials they had to go forward. It was, it's almost perfect. The engineering in them, and keep in mind that these were done by mathematics on pen and paper, you know, and hand and, you know, brain power, not computer. It's very impressive. Uh, you open up a four cam cylinder head or cam drive and you see the four little, you know, ringing pinions, bevel gears, and how everything is all set up. It's quite impressive that this was done in the 50s, starting with, you know, the spider, and carried on. I knew nothing about four cam engines until I came here and, and started um, hearing about them and learning, and really piqued my curiosity when we got um, the last 550 Spider um, because I was responsible uh, completing the initial bat batch of work on that car once we received it. Um, and I've told people in, uh, in conversation that in some respects that was one of the most challenging things I'd done to date. It's, it's a unique engine. It takes quite a bit of time to get the valve or geometry correct, you know, in the timing. Um, a lot of repetition, a lot of pay attention to detail. You got to take your time. You know, over 100 hours is, is normal. You know, you really have to put in the work and measure and re-measure. Measure again, you know, make sure and document everything that you, that you find. Because information on these cars and these engines are hard to come across as well. You know, there's a small network out there and everyone's very helpful. But you know, you, you do have to find this out yourself sometimes. So it's a, it's a beast and it's, it's fun. It's fun, it's a good challenge. A lot of pressure, but good challenge. Like an expecting parent, you know, then, then that baby gets out there and does its thing and takes its first breath, then you, you know, you, you can relax and, you know, and really enjoy what you, what you just accomplished. It's nothing short than magical. I saw a lot and are seeing more of is people um, back in the day when the cars weren't competitive viewed them as less valuable because they stopped service, serving their purpose and sold them for cheap. Um, and now, of course, you know, history's, <laughs> history's a bitch. They're, uh, they're worth a fortune. Um, but they're still being enjoyed um, and, and raced. And I, I think that's one of the things that I enjoy so much about being in this environment is that the cars are used. It's not a static museum, um, which, you know, museums have their place. Um, but for a... An object that isn't just an object, that's something that's motive, um, you have to see it function.